Good morning, and I welcome you in the name of the Lord uh, for this beautiful Sunday day. We, um, I guess I want to know, do we have any good news? What's happened? Okay. I, I didn't get it. Good. Anything else? Okay, Charlotte. Well, yes. All right. You can't. We haven't seen Sarah here for a while. Mary, it's, it's good that you could bring Chuck to church. Okay. You had to come all to, from California to get him here, but that's good. Thanks for coming, Chuck. All right. Any? Okay, Tamara. Good. Her tests are normal. That's a praise the Lord there. Well, you know, we, we did not have a very good week a couple of weeks ago because we had quite a few people was falling. So those of us of age, you know, find something to grab a hold of. But um, good to see Al here. And Lynn is here. Um, what is the last thing that you know about Maxine, Claire? A colostomy. Mm -hmm. uh, and the good thing is, she is excited about it. She is so tired of being debilitated and important to you. She said, if Gordon can do it, so can I. <laughs> but I think she feels like people, um, herself, she's just tired of not being able to. We'll keep her in our prayers on Monday. Um, and Luana is doing good. She's in West Ridge. Roger and I were up there Saturday. You know, it's one of those days before today. Um, but she's in rehab, and she is walking um, up and uh, in the in the hallway with her walker. And she's bound and determined to get out of there. So uh, she's another one that's focused on her mission. Uh, anything else? Bev, good to see you. Okay. And she drove and she drove there by herself. Well, I just drove there. And Reed, you're back with us now? Yes, no more fireworks. <laughs> well, good. Ever, <laughs> ever. Well, I dragged your mother um, to detassel corn once, oh, maybe, oh, maybe oh, twice. Oh. Yeah. And I said, Gloria, I've got news for you. And she said, not detasseling corn. <laughs> <laughs> so there's some of those experiences that we have that one, once is enough, isn't it? Well, I, uh, I love the theme for today. The theme for today is live, love, and share. And each component of our worship service is, is one of those, and sometimes it's all of those. So look for the live, love, and share as we go ahead and, and worship. Call to worship is seek ye earnestly the best gifts, always remembering for what they are given. For verily I say unto you, they are given for the benefit of those who love me and keep my commandments. That's in Doctrine and Covenants 47. 
and we will finish and we will continue on and we will do our hymn of praise one one other announcement is we will be singing the song while the um while the offertory is being taken so be prepared to sing that as uh, the deacons take the offering okay shall we stand Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this family. As we sit here and worship together as a family and listen to Roger's words, help us to pick out what we need to hear and be with us all week. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. don't have little children. Um, Matthew, do you want to bring, take up the offering for us? You've got the whole congregation, but I'm, I think you're up to it. Thank you for, for doing that. And I, um, I just want to show you this picture first, Matthew. Whoa, don't. today uh, for the children's offering always goes to uh, Outreach International. So we can't hear you. Oh. Um, the loose change that we always take up uh, goes to Outreach International. And that is an organization of our church that goes to third and third world countries that um, just do not have a lot of anything. So this is a picture of, they, they give a calendar uh, over the year. And this is a picture of a little girl that lives in the Philippines. And one of the things that Outreach International does when they go in, they ask the community, what do you need the most? And normally, it is good drinking water. And so with the coins that we put in, in this bag every two times a month, those coins go to Outreach International. 
So this is the little girl that says, it is a relief to be able to wake up in the morning and have water nearby. Before, the first thing we did was to fetch pails and buckets of water, waiting in line for hours. We now have a hose that brings water directly to our homes, and we can just open our faucets and fill the containers. And we take that so for granted, don't we, Matthew? Thank you for taking up the offering. Okay. And now for the disciples' generous response. Manage the money we have, no matter the amount, expresses our desire to live and help 
God, neighbors, and ourselves around the world. When we focus our giving on God's purposes, our hearts become more aligned with God's heart. And from Matthew, do not store up yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. God's blessing for the world and love for creation are eternal. Jesus reminds us that our earthly possessions or will end up in the trash or the recycle bin. God contrasts the nature of our earthly possessions with the eternal nature of what we have received from God. The passing of people or time cannot break God's connection with the world. Will those that are gonna take up, receive our offering? Shall we pray? Lord God, we know that we are truly, truly blessed in so many ways, and the portion that we give back to you is minimal to what you have given to us. We pray that the, those that give and those that give in their hearts will truly be blessed. Father, we pray that those that are in charge of these finances will, will use them to the best purposes, the purposes that you have for them. We ask these things in Jesus Christ. Amen.
Will you bow your heads with me as we say the uh, prayer for peace today? God of peace, we open our hearts today and feel the yearnings of our brothers and sisters as we strive for peace. Although we do not know everyone's concerns, we invite them to share in the blessings of this community created in the name of the one who suffered on behalf of all, the Prince of Peace. Encourage us as we work to respect each life's journey, even when it is broken and insert, uncertain, for each person at times must walk alone. Help us to be ready to listen, slow to criticize, lest judgments be unrighteousness and redemptive. Remind us that we are your hands and feet, and that if peace is to come, it must be through our actions. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. pleasure to be able to greet you this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As uh, you look at the theme, live, love, and share, you kind of wonder what it all means. Well, hopefully I'll be able to set some of those things straight a little bit today. Most of you in this congregation and our mission center are aware that I am a promoter of archery. I like to teach archery, I like to shoot in archery competition, and I like to encourage anyone else who's interested in archery to become the same. But what you might not know is that I have in the past enjoyed and participated in another sport, basketball and that I was one of the high scorers when I played as the center on my high school basketball team when he took second place in the state of Colorado at the basketball tournament in 1954. Now you may be asking yourselves, what does this have to do with the theme for today? Live, love, and share. Just bear with me and hopefully you'll find out. The picture on the screen is my picture when I started playing basketball. I'm sure that all of you recognize that right off, even though I haven't changed very much over the years. But as you look at that picture, though, you'll realize one thing. The guy there looks kind of clumsy. He was. But anyway, on with my story. You see, I found this story, which I relate to. It's about basketball, and I want to share it with you this morning so you get a kind of a picture of where we're headed. This is about a young boy who loved basketball. His name was Kevin. No relationship to my son, Kevin, who never played basketball. The Kevin in this true story was said to be slow by the author, Randy Jensen. Kevin didn't learn his ABCs as fast as the other kids. He never came in first in the schoolyard races. However, Kevin had a special rapport with people. He brought smile and big heart, won him plenty of friends. When De Kevin discovered that the pastor of his church was trying to develop a basketball team, he petitioned his mother to become a part of the team. And so he worked hard at the practice while the other boys were practicing dribbling and layups. Kevin shot baskets. He had a special spot near the free throw line he threw and threw the ball, and occasionally it went in. When that happened, Kevin raised his arms 
and shouted, look at me, coach. I kind of identify with that because I had a special spot on the basketball court where I shot. And that was right underneath the basket. Okay? <laughs> I'd like to be able to tell you that the team did well. Actually, they never won a game that season except for the night it snowed and the other team never showed up. At the end of the season, the boys played in the church league's tournament. As the last place team, they drew the unfortunate spot of playing against the first place team, boys who had never lost a game all year. The game went as expected. And near the end of the fourth quarter, Kevin's team stood nearly 30 points behind. It was then that one of the boys called time out. Coach, he said, this is our last game and Kevin's never made a basket. I think we should let him make a basket. The team agreed. Kevin was instructed to stand at his special place near the free throw line and wait. He was told that when he was given the ball, he should shoot. Kevin was ecstatic. He ran to the floor and waited. When the ball was passed to him, he shot and missed. Number 17 from the other team snatched the rebound and dribbled down the court for an easy layup. But a moment later, Kevin got the ball again. He shot and he missed. Number 17 repeated his performance for another two points. Kevin shot a third and a fourth time with the same results. But then the other team seemed to figure out what was going on. And the next time they snatched the rebound, they threw it to Kevin. Kevin shot and missed, but now every rebound came to him and he threw and threw towards the basket. Both teams had circled Kevin by this time and all the boys were shouting, Kevin, Kevin. The crowd took up the chance. Soon everyone in the gym was shouting, Kevin. The coach was sure the game should have been over by this time but he glanced at the clock. It had stopped at 4.3 seconds. The timekeepers were standing by the table shouting with the crowd, Kevin, Kevin. The world had stopped for Kevin. He shot and shot and shot, and finally one of the shots took a lazy bounce on the rim and went in. Chaos reigned. Everyone stood and cheered as if one boy had singly handled, handedly won a world championship. Kevin's arm sprang up and in, in the air and he shouted, I won, I won. His, his team escorted him off the court. The clock ticked down and the game was over. I hope each of you found the meaning of our theme this morning in that story, live, love, and share. Our basic scripture for today comes from Luke 10, 35, 37. And it talks about a lawyer or a person who was stood up to test Jesus by asking him questions. Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus replied, what does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? The man answered, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Right, Jesus told him, do this and you will live. The man wanted to justify his actions, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied with a story. 
A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits that stripped him and of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half, half dead besides the road. By chance, a priest came along, but when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. A temple assistant walked over and looked at him lying there, but he also passed by on the other side. Then a despised Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, he took him, going over to him, he smoothed, soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged him. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn that took care of him. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, take care of this man, and if his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you next time I'm here. Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits, Jesus asked. The man replied, the one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus says, yes, now go and do the same. Who is my neighbor? The question is timely and timeless. This parable is one of the most familiar parables in the gospel. So familiar that perhaps at times we no longer hear the message. Who is the neighbor in this story? What was Jesus trying to help us learn? One, neighbors are found in unexpected places among unexpected people. Being a neighbor involves a willingness to minister with others outside our usual acceptable group, as well as accepting the ministry of those same people. Three, Christ-like love is born of compassion. Kindness is the true mark of a neighbor. These three statements seem to affirm the testimony of Eve Seether from Canada, who shares this testimony with us. At the grocery store checkout counter, a homeless man with a long brown beard and long scraggly hair and wearing a tor torn corduroy suit was mumbling strangely in an agitated manner in front of me. Ahead of him was an elderly man who had a recent hip replacement and who was struggling to stay upright by leaning on his shopping cart. He left the store bent at a 90 degree angle, hugging the cart for dear life. Outside the grocery store, the elderly man leaned too heavily on his shopping cart, sending it and him crashing to the ground. A woman rushed over to him, but after sizing up the situation, she darted away to her car without offering assistance. As I approached the stricken man, the homeless man knelt down beside him. I heard him speaking to the fallen man in soothing, coolic terms. As I pulled the cart back up and reloaded the groceries, two other men approached. Together, the three of them hosted him up and helped him to his car, where they loaded his groceries into the trunk. Much to my surprise, the homeless man offered to sit in the passenger seat to make sure the elderly man got home safely and to help him get his groceries into his residence. Some might say that the elderly man took a chance letting a stranger into his car, 
Some might think something terrible could have happened to him. But since that day, I have seen the elderly man at the grocery store, and he is doing well with his recovery. I also saw the homeless man the very next day at the same mall. He rushed to open the door for a woman and said, here, let me help you. I think he probably lives down near the creek. In reflections on this event, I thought about the parable of the Good Samaritan, whom the Jews despised as a foreigner. Like the Samaritan, the homeless man gave of himself to help the elderly man in his time of need. Although it is possible to vilify a homeless person for being dirty, unkempt, and perhaps smelly, the story is reminded that even those who have saw, fallen on hard times can be our good neighbor. In this case, as in the parable, the story demonstrates God's mercy and our need to do likewise. The whole thought that I would like for you to leave today with is that we have many, many neighbors and we need to be willing to accept their assistance. We need to be willing to assist them if they are needed. And we need to be realizing that we do those things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I would like to have you observe or view a video that I found on YouTube that I think can suggest to you opportunities where you might find the opportunity to be a good neighbor. Thank you, and may God bless you. My prayer.
live, love, and share. May God be with you. Today we have a, an opinion, uh, ability to share in the lives of others that we care so much for. The people that live in our lives that we love, we know it's easy to reach out to them, but there are those that we don't know that still need a loving care, a loving voice, a loving prayer and an opportunity to know that our God is with them in every way. There are so many people that are within our own reaches that we aren't even aware of that there are so many more. So as we continue on with this week, take your bulletin insert with you and remember these people that are on our list. Maxine, as we talked earlier, will be having surgery, hopefully on Monday. It hasn't been confirmed when I was there on Friday. Um, Luana really wants to come home. She is pushing to do that, so keep her in mind. And Gloria, she's been going and feeding the cat and taking care of that, so Gloria will be really glad when Luana comes home. I know the the benefits of having someone you love come back to you when they've been away, so we understand that. Uh, we also want to remind you about Bobby Mitchell. Uh, Steve said that she had hoped to come to church today, but that she was exhausted by the time she got ready. So she still is struggling, still getting therapy, but the, you know, the stroke will take some time, as we have all are aware of, but she has the desire, and that's important. And then Eric is another person on the list, Eric Mitchell. So as we continue on our week, we have to realize that these are people that we love and care for, and that we can keep them in our minds. So if this moment we will close the service with a prayer of intercession as well as the benediction. Our dear Heavenly Father, We've been grateful to be here this morning to share in the stories that, Ro that Roger read, 
And knowing that his words come to us in a way that touch us, knowing that we also can be that good neighbor, whether they are neighbors that live next door or neighbors that are in the same community. We know that there are times in our lives that we can stand up and help. I ask that today, for instance, we are thinking mostly about Bobby and Steve and Eric and um, Maxine and Luana, but there are others that have been on the list and that continue to have a special need for you to show the love, to show the care that we can share in their lives in asking for your, your, your blessings on them. So today, as we close the service, I just thank you for your presence here. Your spirit is upon us and help us to each and every one of us to go forth and enjoy the world that we live in and take care of it and the people surrounding us. As in the sending forth, I read, may you be filled with the knowledge of God's will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. So I thank you, Lord, and I praise your name, and I ask that we go in grace to live, love, and share the mission of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.